guys, Brian with Buffalo Beer Reviews. Uh, back with something a little on the different side. I uh, I bought this maybe about two and a half weeks ago from uh, my shop on um, Maple, uh, Premier Gourmet. There's a lot of stuff there. Uh, I wanted to kind of get something different, maybe something I haven't had from either one of the names, get it on video just to see how it treated me, right? We're gonna take a look at chat room from Springdale and Counterweight. Springdale's uh, by Jack's Abbey. I think it's a like a kind of a, a sub division of Jack's Abbey. Counterweight. Um, I don't know where counterweight's out of. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's got this cool little uh, like '80s uh, throwback to like the the whole um, chat room sort of vibe. Do you know what I mean? Uh, if you're my age, this is nostalgia. If you're, I think, a little bit younger, then it, I think it's obnoxious. Stuff like that. Uh, they've got a very um, skinny sort of write-up on it. It's got this cool little uh, chat room uh, kind of looking dialogue on it. Um, it's a 6.5% ABV, and it's just a, an IPA. I'm not sure if this is considered in New England. No, it just says an American IPA. So... Uh, brewed with IPA brewed with South American hops South African hops I'm sorry South African hops um, and that's really all I got on it so oof. Um, just it was backing up it kept getting uh, beers kind of shuffled in ahead of it um, I was backing up a little bit so I wanted to make sure I could get it on video if this uh, seems like your type of IPA you can go grab it it's at Maple and um, no, um, Niagara Falls Boulevard, Premier Gourmet, or if it's not, you can just keep moving right down the line. Take a look at this. You know, in this sort of lighting, it's almost got a, a very faint sort of um, fluorescent sort of glow to it. Uh, fluorescent off yellow. Um, it's not the haziest I've seen. I can just see through it down at the bottom of the glass. It is carbonated, this really uber white uh, head on it. Um, kind of thin, kind of dissipating a little bit. You know what I mean? If I can get some of the, yeah, not terrible. <sighs> hmm. Eh, it's like um, a so-so aroma. Getting a little bit of, again, a little, um, little candy presence. Uh, a little bit on the light citrus. Um, a little bit on, like, light as in thin citrus. <sighs> Hints of acidity, but not uh, overblown there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe uh, maybe just a piney or a grassy sort of, of uh, hint towards the back end of the citrus. So, not um, I don't know what I was expecting with this. Honestly, I'd only seen a couple of uh, pictures on Untapped about it. It kind of it didn't look bad, so I gave it a shot. But that's just me. Let's see how this thing tastes. Well, it's, it's not unpleasant, I'll tell you that much, which is always, I guess, a, a good first step for me going through all of these beers. So I'm getting sort of uh, definitely um, kind of like a watered down orange uh, take to it. Um, ever so, um, I think, like a, a couple of clicks towards that riny, pithy sort of, of mouthfeel. Um, those grassy, piney notes, eh, not so much grassy, but definitely there's like a little pine twang to it. Yeah, I think uh, the more that you set your mind on that sort of, uh, that course, you can kind of, you can pick up the piney and the, on the aroma and on the, the flavor. And I still do. I feel like it wants to have some of that um, candy, some of that marmalade, candied sort of hard candy vibe to the sweetness. Um, but it kind of seems underdeveloped, like uh, like an underdeveloped sort of character characteristic to the uh, to the beer, which is too bad because I think 
um, had that been maybe more well-rounded or, or more uh, developed that this may be a, a little bit more of an enjoyable beer? Yeah, I think the overall experience is just um, is right down the middle of the road, sort of American IPA. Uh, the mouthfeel is a little bit on the thin side. Um, and I think maybe development of those sort of uh, flavors that we were talking about could, I think, expand it to like a really nice medium bodied sort of experience. But uh, as it is right now, it's really not. Um, the 6.5% is fairly easy. It drinks thin, it kind of tastes thin. Um, I think the 6.5 is uh, generous, um, and it's, uh, it seems to be semi-hidden by, the, by the, the stature of the beer. There really isn't any sort of aftertaste to it. Um, it's just kind of like this generic uh, hit and miss every time you take a sip, sort of malty, um, hoppy, uh, semi-sweet sort of uh, aftertaste, which is also kind of strange. You know, I, uh, this isn't an awful beer by any means. There are a ton of beers at this uh, shop that I go to. And I figured if you're in the same area of Buffalo that I'm at, and you're going to the same uh, bottle shops, um, then maybe, you know, you would like to have some of your selection uh, whittled down for you. Um, for, but for me, um, this probably isn't going to be a repurchase. Even though it's not awful, it's not going to be a, a terrible beer to finish. Uh, there's so much other uh, selection at the shop that uh, uh, I'll take my one off and I will keep searching. Um, I don't know. That's a, a little look at uh, Chat Room by Springdale and Counterweight. Eh. Yeah. That's it for me, guys. I, I really appreciate the watches and the clicks and the thumbs up and the comments and all that good shit. Um, yeah, I've, I'm thinking I finally am getting caught up on the selection in the refrigerator. So uh, try to keep up and uh, make some uh, more videos for you guys. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.